Well, hey guys, Bob from Bobot's Trains. Hey, it's been a while, so what have I been working on? Well, today we want to look at my adaptation of a model railroad speedometer. You can see down here at the bottom. So we're going to go into some details here. Now, this was originally an idea from Steve Spence, and I'll put a link under this video to his page on YouTube. Um, but I took what he had and I sort of adapted it and made my own circuit over the last couple months and played with it. So I thought I'd show you what I did here. Now I started out building a sample circuit on a breadboard here with a display and an Arduino Nano and some infrared sensors per the information I saw on Steve Spence's YouTube page. Now his original circuit had some limitations that I wanted to try to overcome. Um, it seemed like it only sensed the train moving in one direction and I wanted both directions. Also his was HO scale and it seemed to be limited to just the set length of a train that had to pass within maybe three to five seconds and then it would reset. So I'm at O scale, I had to overcome a couple things. First of all, the sensors were limited to about 15 millimeters and you know some of the clearance under the cars in O scale might be more than that at times. So that plus changing the coding um, so that it would never reset if a train was still going over top of it. Now this is not a full tutorial to show you all the details how to do this, but I'll show you some of the main components. On the upper left there is an Arduino Nano. Um, then to its right would be a Adafruit seven segment display with a backpack for I2C. And also in the center there, are the two infrared sensors. You also need some headers, some resistors and things like that. Now, once I had the prototype working, I had to make it more permanent, if you want to call it that, or a better solution. So what you have is your two sensors here that I shrink tubed, um, the blue one and the gray wire. They're just start and stop sensors. And then I fashioned up a circuit board here with some uh, terminals, have the display here, which attaches via I2C to the board. Uh, power is provided just right now by five volts up here on my power supply for testing. Have your Arduino Nano board here and some resistors whose values adjust the sensitivity of the infrared sensors. So what does it do? Well, what you do is if I move my hand over these sensors, it says 38.96 scale miles per hour. So it senses when the start sensor is triggered and then waits until the end sensor is triggered, 89.91 scale miles per hour. It does some calculations based on the distance between the two sensors, 138 miles per hour, and then shows the display. So you got Start sensor is triggered and then it waits and then I'll trigger the end sensor and that was 1.53 scale miles per hour and all the calculations are done on the code on the Arduino. Eventually I moved the electronics to the layout so down here you have your display which is just temporary while I wired this up to show you. Over here on the left is your start sensor and here's your end sensor and they're actually interchangeable but my train's going clockwise right now. So you start out not covering any of the sensors and the train will take off and start going around. Okay, well, go the right way. And then we'll give it a shot and I'll show you. Let's try 34 scale miles per hour. Thirty three point six five. It resets to zero because at this point you could be varying the speed and it would be inaccurate from that first read. So it'll just stay zero until all the cars pass, wait five seconds and reset. Let's try 57, five seven miles per hour. Display shows 57.55 and it blinks slowly because it's between 50 and 70. Get a reset. Let's try 73, 73. 72.3, very close.
Let's try some slow speed operation. Let's go to eight miles per hour. Triggers the start sensor, goes 18 inches, 7.87, fairly accurate. This is just a quick look at the infrared sensor embedded between two ties of my Gargrave's track. So while we're in test mode right now under the layout, I have the start sensor, if you will, here, and eventually I'll hot glue that up there once it's adjusted right. That comes in and goes to the board. The end sensor, I call it, the, you know, the end sensor. It's one of the, the second sensor. It's in the blue cable, and that goes to the board. The Arduino board itself with the logic on it there. And then this is just a USB cable providing power going over to my computer and, of course, the display itself. So the next step, of course, is to create a 3D enclosure so I can take this board and mount it up underneath the layout and get it protected and out of the way here with all these wires. And of course, the same with the display. Eventually, I'll wire that up through here and design a little 3D billboard or some type of thing on the layout that it can display as the train passes by. And lastly, just to look at some of my handiwork here, this was, you know, one of the first circuit boards I've kind of designed and done here. I mean, this is a hobby for me. I'm not a professional, so I just did what I had to do in this real thin um, 30 gauge wire here to hook up some of the traces and things on the back. So learning as I go, I'm no professional, but works very well. Let's just take a look at it there. It's pretty cool. Now I have a lot of hobbies and I tend to bore easily, so it's pretty cool when you think about this. Think of all the hobbies that I've got to combine here. The model railroading, the construction, the electronics, the Arduino programming, um, the 3D design and printing, which is eventually what I think part two of this video will be about when I get around to it. I have to decide how I'm going to mount this thing, so I don't know if I'm going to hot glue it or put some holes in this board and maybe use some nylon screws to hold it to some type of um, a mount, you know, sort of like this. I mean, this is way too big, but you, you mount the circuit board in there and maybe leave an opening for it, put some screws down in here, and then that whole thing can attach up to the underside of the layout and still give me some some access. Maybe I'll leave a bezel like this, you know, so I can access the wiring or something and these connections over here. And then also I'll need some type of a small bezel for the display itself. So I'll have to design that into maybe a, a billboard or something like that that can be on the layout and a little square around it and some little legs and set it there for the people to see as it goes by. And also figure out how to power it. Maybe I'll power it off my 12 volt line under there. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it's been informative and if nothing else, entertaining. <laughs> and thanks for watching.